Join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us today for another week of broadcast here in Bible Tract Echoes. I hope you had a great time this weekend with your family, uh, with your friends in the house of God, worshiping the Lord. I hope you were strengthened and challenged. I hope you have a goal for this week based upon the preaching of the Word of God in your local church. And very politely say, if you go to a church where they don't open the Word of God and challenge you to live God's way, uh, then I challenge you to find a church where that does happen. I say that in all politeness, but that's really the kind of churches that we all need. And I am sure that you have a local church that is like that, and you have a pastor that is true to the Word of God. Now, uh, I have my Bible open today to Psalm 130, Psalm 130, and if you can turn there and take the time to do that, please do that with me right now. If not, then I want to talk to you today, today about waiting on God, one particular kind of waiting on on God. As you do get your Bible open there, I want to remind you that Bible Tract Echoes is the radio part of the radio arm of Bible Tracks Incorporated. And since 1938, it has been our privilege to help God's servants all over the world to have good gospel tools to help them in their evangelism. And we want to give you access to those tools as well. Now, we've been giving our tracks away, literally giving them away since 1938. And I would like to give you some. And uh, if you will write to us or call us or give us an email and tell us your address, we will be glad to give you a free sample packet of all of our English tracks. I say English tracks because we hear Bible tracks, print tracks in many different languages and send them out around the world to missionaries and churches and pastors and so on. One of the tracks in that sample packet is a track entitled, Have You Received God's Gift? Have you received God's gift? Knowing that salvation is a gift of God is one thing. Receiving the gift is a totally different thing, isn't it? And you remember the day that you received God's gift of everlasting life? Do you? Have you received his gift? My friend, we need to help people to receive the gift of eternal life. We cannot save them, can we? But God says that uh, a soul winner is a wise person. And my friend, you and I need to be out and about sharing the gospel, striving to be God's messengers, ambassadors with the truth, and uh, sharing the gospel, seeing people come to Christ. Let us help you do that, won't you please? Now, at the end of the broadcast, our announcer will give you our mailing address. He will not give our telephone number or our website. I'm going to do that right now. If you're ready, let me give you the telephone number. You can contact us here in Central Illinois by calling area code 309 8 28-6888. One more time, the telephone number here is area code 309-828-6888. Or as we said, you can go to our website. The website address is uh, the bulk of it is the name of our ministry, Bible Tracks Inc. Inc. is abbreviation for incorporated. Our website is www.bibletracksinc.org. Org. One more time, www.bibletracksinc.org. I come here to uh, Psalm 130. I, I've been last week and this week, we're going to be in the Psalms. I'm getting ready so that the first uh, of uh, April here, we're going to start our study, marching our way through the Gospel of Matthew. I'm looking forward to that. I'm preparing for that. I tell you that just so that you can be primed and ready to listen and study God's Word with us. We'll do that beginning next week. But I come here to Psalm 130, and I'm going to use a verse here, a word really, to, as a springboard for tomorrow to get us into Psalm 25. Psalm 130, great text. Here's what it says, verse 1. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who should stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with them plenteous redemption 
redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Isn't that a great text? Well, I come here because this psalm encourages people, and the psalmist says here, he is going to wait on the Lord. Do you realize there's a number of Hebrew words used in the Old Testament for God's people to wait on God, and they all emphasize a different facet and phase and and emphasize a different part of what it means to wait on the Lord. There's there's one that means to wait, like waiting after being hurt or wounded, and we're waiting for God to do something, but we're waiting in pain. The emphasis is that we're we're hurting while we're waiting. Another word means that we're waiting uh, in in a guarded or protection, uh, protected state. It means that we're waiting where God has put a hedge of protection around us. The emphasis is the fact that God is protecting us while we're waiting. Another word means that we're waiting in silence and in deep quietness for God. It means that we're being quiet. We're studying to be quiet. That's what the New Testament text says. Another word, Hebrew word, means to wait a long time in trust and hope in God. The emphasis of that Hebrew word is the length of time that we're waiting and the the attitude of trusting God while we're waiting. There's another word yet that means to wait with a strong, scrutinizing look Uh, to God. We're looking to God hard. I mean, we're really straining to see him in the midst of our waiting because of what's going on. All of those are great words used in the proper place, but the word used here is a different one yet. It's the word that's been used, that familiar verse out of Isaiah 40, 31. They that do what? That's right. They that wait upon the Lord shall what? Yep, renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Verse 5 of Psalm 130 says, the psalmist says, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. Verse 6 says, my soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. The word wait here means to intertwine our life with God. If you just take your fingers of your hands and open them up a wide and just practice intertwining them while I'm talking here a moment, you get a good visual picture of what it means to wait upon the Lord. The word wait upon the Lord doesn't mean to sit like a bump on the log and say, oh, I'm going to wait here until God does something. The word here is an active, involved waiting where you are taking your life, intertwining it in the life of God, intertwining, intertwining in the truth of God. This is an active verb. You are waiting on God doing something to to prepare your heart for what God is getting you ready for and uh, what God is doing in your life at the moment while God seems to be uh, uh, holding off, uh, not doing anything. God is in reality getting you and me prepared for what he has next for us. And sometimes we don't use that time to get prepared. You know, uh, we try to encourage our children to be savers of their money, don't we? We try to get them to know how to plan their money because rainy days do come, don't they, my friend? And uh, it's nice to have a cushion in the, a savings account so when the car breaks down, you need new tires, the roof goes, you have something there with you prepared in the time waiting for trouble to come because life calamities do come, difficult times do come. We're preparing our financial uh, resources to be ready for those times. My friend, God gives us times to prepare our lives for a next project he has for us, a next ministry he has for us. I'm going to turn in my Bible right now to Psalm 25. That's where I want to go tomorrow. But in getting us ready for that, the, the word wait is used there. And uh, it's used, Psalm 25, verse 3 says, same word, yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Let me just say that this word wait, this idea of wait, of intertwining our lives, if you and I will do that, according to Psalm 25, 3, it'll prevent shame from coming to us and is the opposite of those who act and transgress God's law. When we are waiting on God and God seems to be inactive in our lives, it's easy for us to try to pick up and try to help God out. You ever try to do that? Eh? Well, we all have. But my friend, we in the process, we usually transgress God's law in the process, a, a, a 
a parallel passage here would be Psalm 69 and verse 6. But my dear friend, waiting on God, intertwining our lives with him, will prevent shame from coming to us. The same chapter, Psalm 25, verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Here, this waiting, entwining our lives with God and his word, waiting allows time for God to give us insight into his truth that we will really need when God begins to work and move us in the direction he has for us as soon as this waiting period is over. My friend, you and I need time to have insight from God. We want God to give us insight and we want to give it to us right now. God is not at our beck and call. God is God. We are his servants. We are his creation. We need to be at his beck and call. And sometimes his beck and call is come aside and get your life intertwined with me because I have some insights for you and it's going to take time. I, if you've heard me preach much, you've heard me use the phrase, uh, talking about our human brains, I refer to them as peanut butter brains. Well, my friend, it takes time for God's insights to get through the peanut butter brain of Mark's head so that Mark can grasp the truth of God. I am not God. I am not all-knowing. And the Spirit of God has to work with the, sometimes what's seemingly the mush upstairs in my brain. But if I take time and wait upon him, he is true and faithful to give me the insights I need. Not of that, the last verse of Psalm 25 says, or next to the last verse, let integrity and uprightness preserve me for because I wait on thee. We need time to wait on God to strengthen the integrity of our lives, to strengthen the uprightness of our lives before God and before others. Why is there such a lack of integrity, seemingly, in so many people who claim Christ as Savior? Well, the kid, the kids would say, well, duh, Pastor Mark, well, duh. That simply means, well, it's obvious. They're not waiting on God, giving God the opportunity to build integrity, to build uprightness in. Again, we want to be, we want integrity and we want it now. Integrity is a process of building by God building in us as we wait upon him. I'm turning in my Bible now to Psalm 37, a very familiar psalm to so many of you, but the idea of waiting and this identical word wait is used there. Psalm 37 verse 34 says this, wait in the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Waiting on God allows us to inherit the blessings which God has planned for us. We get them in his time and by his methods, not our time and our methods. Oh, God wants to bless us as his people and manifest his power in our lives, but we need to wait upon him, intertwine our lives with him to get those things. Again, Psalm 40 and verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord and inclined unto me and heard my cry. Waiting on God, intertwining our lives with God, allows for God to God's perfect and lasting solutions to my problems to come to me, rather me trying to put Mark Smith solutions. My friend, are you practicing intertwining your life upon God? My friend, have you ever come and uh, intertwined your life with him to be saved from your sin? That's where Psalm 130 has a lot to say about there, that there is forgiveness for sin. There is a way for sin to be forgiven because of the mercy of God. It's great and it's marvelous. Oh, my friend, if you don't know Christ as Savior, you need to stop right now and go to God and say, God, my life's a mess. I need my life to be saved. I need everlasting life. I come to you. You take my life. I intertwine my life with your life, with your truth. I believe Jesus Christ died and shed his blood for me. I receive him as my Savior now. Oh, my friend, if you've done that, why don't you write to me? Amen. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. 
And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.